Hey, what's up you lot, Path here, and in today's video I like to talk about a particular area of mathematics that's extremely useful in many areas of physics. Basically, a lot of you have asked me, Path, what areas of maths can I learn in order to understand concepts a little bit earlier than usual in physics? And honestly, the first thing that I thought of was matrices, so that's what we're going to talk about today. As always, you don't need to know any advanced mathematical concepts in order to follow along with this video if I've made it correctly. If you enjoyed this video, then please do hit the thumbs up button and feel free to subscribe to my channel for more fun physics content. Let's get into it. So matrices, singular matrix, a really neat way to display information, but also have some extremely useful mathematical properties. Now, before we look at the areas of physics in which matrices can be useful, let's quickly take a moment to look at some basics. If you already know what matrices are and are relatively familiar with the basic ideas surrounding them, Feel free to skip to this timestamp here. Okay, so let's imagine that we've got three bags of apples. Let's say we label these bags bag one, bag two, and bag three. Let's also say that each of these bags has two apples in it, one red and one yellow. We choose to label these apples apple one and two. The red ones are always apple one and the yellow ones are always apple two. We then measure the mass of each one of these apples. The results are shown in this table here. We could equally represent all of this information in the form of a matrix, which looks something like this. Basically, it's the same information, just represented slightly differently. No table and just a pair of large brackets surrounding our data. Importantly, though, for any particular value in this matrix, we can see that the row number. So if we're looking at row one, row two or row three gives us the bag number. If we're looking at bag one, bag two or bag three. And the column number gives us which number of apple we're looking at. So column one corresponds to apple one and column two corresponds to apple two. So for example, if we want to find the mass of the red apple in bag two, we first look at row number two corresponding to bag two, and then we look at column number one. Now what I've described here, of course, is just one particular use of a matrix. In reality, matrices can be used to represent a whole range of information, not just the masses of apples in bags. Now, here's the thing. Even though these matrices look like just a fancy way to display information, they have some rather useful mathematical properties that exactly correspond to requirements of certain theories in physics. Firstly, for example, there is a way to multiply two matrices together, but this is not quite the same as multiplying two numbers together, which we may be fairly familiar with. Let's say we want to multiply matrices A and B together. If we want to do this, then the number of columns that matrix A has must be the same as the number of rows that matrix B has. This is a requirement of the way matrix multiplication is defined. And interestingly, the product, which we can call AB, will have the same number of rows as matrix A and the same number of columns as matrix B. Now, this might seem a little bit strange if you've never worked with matrices before, so I highly recommend learning about matrix multiplication. It's pretty cool. Here's the important thing, though. If the number of columns of the first matrix must be the same as the number of rows of the second matrix in order to multiply those two matrices together, and the resultant matrix has the same number of rows as the first matrix and the same number of columns as the second, then multiplying matrices in the order AB is not going to give us the same result as multiplying the matrices in the order BA. The order in which we multiply two matrices together matters. In fact, it's not even necessary that the product BA exists if AB also exists. Because if we have two matrices that look like this, then we can find the product AB, but we cannot find the product BA. This idea might seem extremely counterintuitive at first because we're used to the commutative nature of multiplication when we multiply numbers together. Two times five is the same thing as five times two. When we're multiplying numbers, these numbers commute with each other. The order in which we multiply them doesn't matter. The end result is the same. But the difference between multiplying two numbers together and multiplying two matrices together is that multiplication is defined slightly differently in each of these cases. Now, interestingly, this non-commutative nature of matrix multiplication, the fact that the order in which we multiply matrices matters, comes in really handy in quantum mechanics. In this physics theory, whenever we make a measurement on any system that we happen to be considering, that measurement has some impact on the system itself. What this means is that if we want to make two different measurements on our system, then the order in which we make those measurements actually matters. Say, for example, our system is a particle, say an electron, and we want to measure the position and momentum of this particle. Let's say we decide to measure its position first and then its momentum. 
that's not necessarily going to give us the same results as if we measure its momentum first and then its position. The order matters. Now this is another one of those weird quantum ideas and if it's the first time you're hearing of it and you'd like to learn more then check out one of my previous videos up here. Now in quantum mechanics making a measurement is represented by what's known as a measurement operator. We won't go into too much detail here again I've spoken about that in previous videos but measurement operators are very easily represented mathematically with matrices. The non-commutative nature of matrices is perfect for representing the non-commutative nature of measurement operators, showing us that making measurements in different orders can give us different results. As well as this non-commutative behavior, matrices have a lot of other properties that make them really ideal for representing ideas in quantum mechanics. But let's now take a look at another area of physics where matrices are commonly used. My most recent video before this one discussed Einstein's field equations, the governing equations of general relativity. In that video, we discussed how mass or energy distributed within the fabric of space-time can end up warping that space-time fabric. And the way that a particular mass or energy distribution warps space-time is encoded in Einstein's field equations. And the field equations are written in terms of these interesting mathematical objects known as tensors. For example, the metric tensor is a really important quantity in general relativity that describes the shape of the space-time fabric, if you want to call it that, that we happen to be studying. Is it a flat space-time? Is it curved? What is its exact shape? This is what the metric tensor tells us. Importantly though, the metric tensor and any of the other tensors in general relativity have certain restrictions on how they can behave. And although matrices are a really neat way to represent basically any information that we want to represent, if we place certain restrictions on them, then they're a really useful way to represent tensors. In fact, that's what we most commonly do. Tensors in general relativity are represented by matrices. And for that matter, tensors used in any area of physics are most commonly represented by matrices. Basically, here's the point. If you're looking to learn a little bit of mathematics that hopefully isn't too complicated at the very beginning, that would allow you to understand some slightly more advanced concepts in physics, then I think there's nothing better than learning matrix algebra. Matrices are used in many different areas of physics. We saw two examples, quantum mechanics and relativity. In my opinion, the two coolest examples. And if you're already familiar with the mathematical aspect by the time you come to learn quantum mechanics or relativity or whatever else, then you can spend some more time focusing on the physical interpretation. It's worth learning how to multiply matrices, how to invert them, how to solve simultaneous equations with matrices, and just get used to the idea of matrix representations of whatever it is you're trying to represent. And that's all I got for you today. If you enjoyed this video, please do hit the thumbs up button and subscribe for more fun physics content. Do feel free to hit the bell button if you want to be notified when I upload and check out my Patreon page if you'd like to support me on there. Thank you as always for your wonderful support and I will see you really soon.